Let's say you're the typical household in Canada and you want to buy a home. You earn the medium household income of roughly $85,000 a year before tax, and you're looking to purchase an $800,000 home. After years of hard work, you manage to save just enough cash for 20% down payment. Mission accomplished, right? Well, not even close. In today's video, we're gonna talk about why it's so unaffordable to buy a home in Canada and where we went wrong. But if you wanna book a free call with us and just chat about real estate, you can click the first link down below in the description and it'll just be a Zoom call in the comfort of your own home. The first problem we face is the ownership costs. Monthly mortgage payments, property taxes, and utilities would eat up 63% of your gross pay. And it gets even worse in some locations. Ownership costs amount for 84% of median household income in the Toronto area and 103% in the Vancouver region, which really means the typical household in Vancouver doesn't even earn enough money to make payments on a home, even before taxes are deducted and other necessities, say food and other things you just need to live for. Even in previous decades, the suburbs and smaller cities offered an affordable option for priced out families out of the city but increasingly those markets are getting swept up in the housing crisis as well. Since the start of 2020, the benchmark home price has risen 89% in Moncton, in Halifax, it's risen 68%, in a small town in Ontario called Tilsonburg, which has just over 16,000 people, prices have jumped 72%. But truthfully, there aren't simple explanations for how Canada ended up in this situation. Instead, there's a series of decisions and trends, sometimes decades in the making, and others have popped up quickly that have made homes so expensive and out of reach for many. Canada's pace of home construction in the face of surging population is simply we did not build enough homes to keep up with demand. Housing undersupply is a chronic problem in Canada, but it's become more acute since 2016, when population growth picked up in response to an increased immigration targets without a rise in housing starts. It's not that homes aren't being built. Indeed, housing starts have been notably strong over the past three years, running around 20% higher than the average in the years before the COVID-19 pandemic. A record number of homes, more than 350,000, are under construction as we speak, but the brisk pace of building is not enough to keep up with the country's population growth and there's little evidence that gap will close any time soon. With demand for rental units outstripping supply, the rental vacancy rate has plummeted to a record low of 1.5% from an average of around 3% in the decade before the pandemic. That's pushing rental costs up at a historic rate. Average rents across the country rose 8% year over year in 2023 with much larger increases for units with tenant turnover. That's way outpacing wages. Moreover, project delays can lead to substantial increases in construction costs. The same report found that for every month of delay, construction costs rose by $26 to $3,300 a unit, another headwind for affordability. Next, the construction industry has a productivity problem. Output in the sector is back to where it was in the late 1990s, and the gap with the overall economy is growing. There are particular issues facing the industry. CMHC Deputy Chief Economist Kevin Hughes has noted in a recent blog post, the building process is complex and varies by building type, and many aspects of production fall outside of the developer's control, which can lead to delays. Moreover, the residential construction industry is quite fragmented and includes small players who are focused on smaller projects but also lack capital to make investments that would boost their productivity. Not to mention, construction materials have skyrocketed. Wood and concrete to steel and glass, residential construction materials have soared in price compared to years before the pandemic, ending years of steady and predictable cost increases. On a national basis, construction costs have jumped nearly 60% since the end of 2019 and 80% since 2017. Canadians are used to seeing eye-popping housing prices, especially in Toronto and Vancouver. What's new is the rapid run-up in mortgage rates over the past two years as the Bank of Canada tightens their monetary policy to fight inflation. This combination of pricey homes and restrictive mortgage rates has transformed a long simmering housing affordability issue into a thorough middle class problem. Existing homeowners are seeing monthly mortgage payments jump by the thousands of dollars when they renew. Would be buyers are shut out of the market, unable to qualify for a mortgage at these high interest rates. But some young Canadians are managing to buy homes, although not to the same extent as before. And because homes are so expensive, young buyers often rely on their parents' wealth to get into the market. 
In November, a Statistics Canada report found that adult children of homeowners were more likely to own a home than those parents who were non-homeowners. And this likelihood increased if the number of parents actually owned multiple properties. Basically, the children of multiple property owners had lots of social capital, they had access to higher education, and they wind up in higher paying jobs on average with a down payment from their parents. Anyways, guys, that's everything for this video. There's definitely more issues in Canada when it comes to Canadian real estate and why it's so expensive, but these were just a few I wanted to touch upon in this video. If you enjoyed this content, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. We're trying to grow here on YouTube, but if you want short form content that we post every single day, it's pure education for you guys and it's totally free. You can follow us on Instagram and TikTok. It's at Canadian Real Estate Homefront. We'll see you guys soon.